Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and I'm back with another Figma tutorial. In today's video, we will be building this really nice magnifying or a zoom interaction uh, using just Figma prototyping. And this sort of interaction is really common on e-commerce website where you hover over an image, product image and shows you a part or zooms a part of an image. So we're going to build this interaction in Figma. So let's see how can we build this using just Figma prototyping. So let's get started. So we're in Figma right now and the first thing that you need is a desktop artboard. Now I'm picking a MacBook Pro 14 inch artboard specifically but you're free to pick any desktop size artboard that you like. And the next thing that you want to add is basically these dummy UI, a top navigation and sidebar that I've added here. I've again copied this directly from Nike's website and just put it here because we're not going to animate it. I've also logged it here if you see. I just logged it so that I just accidentally don't move it around. So yeah, so first you need an artboard and some dummy UI. And I've left this space on the left side empty because I'm going to place my image there. So the next thing that you will be needing is a high quality image. So again, if you see this image, uh, I've again grabbed this image from Nike's website. Uh, just make sure you get a really high quality image so that you can even uh, scale it. Once you scale it to a higher size, it should not pixelate. So just make sure that you pick a really, really high resolution, high quality image. So yeah, so now we have our two elements ready. The next thing that we need to do is um, I need to figure out how much size I want to put for my image. So what I'll do is I'll just hit A on my keyboard. I want my image to fit into this frame roughly. Okay, let me just add a fill, simple fill. Okay, so I want to place my image here. So what I'll do is now I'll just copy my image that we already have and paste it here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create components for the magnifying state. So let's quickly do that. So to start building our magnifying components, what we need to do is I'll just quickly drag out this uh, frame that we have already created and I'll move it out. Okay. And now what we need to do is we need to create these magnifying uh, circles that we saw. So what I'm going to do is you have our main image here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate it. So command D to duplicate it and I'm going to call it selector. I'll explain it why I'm calling it selector a little later, but just bear with me. So now we have the second image. And what I want to do is I want to zoom it and I want to scale this image a little bit higher than the main image that we have. Okay. So I'll hit my K tool here. Now you can specify a specific dimension, a scaling factor directly from this panel, or you can just manually scale it as well. I'm just going to do it manually for now. So let me just do that. And just let's see quickly if I move it out. So yeah, so if you see, this is the uh, main image and this is the scaled version. I think this much scaling looks perfectly fine. So I'll just go with it. Okay. Cool. So here is my scaled image on top of my main image. Okay. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to um, change the bounds of this uh, image itself. Okay. So how to do that? We'll quickly first of all, I'll just align it here and I'm working on the zoomed image or the magnified image and I'll hit command on my keyboard. And I can now resize the bounds of this group. Maybe I can show you if I move it out. If I just hit command on my keyboard and resize the bounds, if you see the scaling is not changing, only the frame is getting clipped. So I want it to be a smaller circle because that's what I showed you in the interaction, right? So what I'll do is I'll just move to a part of it, for example, like this, and I'll reduce the size. So now we have a square here. Um, we have changed the dimensions by hitting command on our keyboard for this zoomed image. And now the next thing I need to do is I need to add a really high radius to it. So it becomes a circle and then I'm going to add a stroke to it. So I'll add a stroke here of white color and we can do it center and then probably I'll do it 10. Okay. So this is needed because when you create that zoom effect, it'll just stand out. Okay. So that's what we have also done in our interaction. So I hope you understood this bit. What we have done is we have just magnified the image, cropped it using our command key. And now we have shrinked it down to a circle by adding a radius to it. And this will become our magnifying state. So if you see when I hover here, it will become bigger and look really nice. So that's the first bit. And the next thing that you need to do is you need to create this sort of magnified circle for different position on this shoe. So I first created for the top one, maybe I'll create one for the center. So what you can do is 
So this one becomes like your first element. Now just duplicate this one and you just select the first element that you already created, the selector element. And I'm calling it selector because you'll be using it for selection. I'll move it here and see what I'm doing right now. It's a very simple trick, but what I'm going to do right now is I'll just again hit command on my keyboard and change the bounds, this magnified image to somewhere else. I'll make sure the size is again 400 height is 400 so I'll just make sure that the width is again 400 as well yeah perfect so if you see now um, from here to here I have just resize and change the cropping of that image by hitting command on my keyboard it will be control I think for uh, Windows user so when you do that you have now placed this circle to a different location so similar size 400 by 400 but now it's zooming to a different area and that's how you mimic uh, this movement of magnification okay now one more thing that we forgot to add in our element was a little bit of a blur so i'll hit r on my keyboard and i'll create a rectangle and i'll place this rectangle between my main image and my zoomed magnification image and i'll call it blur i'll give it white color I'll come here in the effects panel and I'll give it a background blur. I'll reduce the opacity. So probably like 30, 20, I mean, you can just play with it. It's totally up to you. And you can change the blur as well. How much blurry you want the image to be. So I'll probably go with 10 and I'll go with a really high blur value of 30. Okay. So now we have added blur as well. So if you see, this looks really nice. I'll just copy this blur and add to our second frame as well and just make sure that you place it in between your image so this looks perfectly nice so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create this sort of circle for different areas so uh, probably i'll do it for a top back and a few in the bottom ones so let me just quickly do that and come back to you Okay, so all of our frames are ready. So if you see, this was our first frame that we started with. And uh, then the second one where I've just shifted the magnification to this central location. In the third one, just to laces, to top, to this part. And then I'm just making a circle here. If you see, I'm just moving up. And then I'm again coming down. So I've created this sort of like nine frames here. And all of them has like a different zoom level. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do now is I'll also create one more frame. Let me just quickly do that. I'll just duplicate this first frame and I'll explain you why we need this duplication. This will work as our resting state. So I'm just going to call it zoom zero zero. And this uh, image will act as a resting state. Basically when you are not hovering on the image, this is the part that will show up. So for that, what we need to do is I'll select this selector image that we have and I'll give it a zero pass through. So that's not visible. And even for the blur, I'll give in the first frame as zero pass through. So when you're not hovering on it, you will be seeing the main image that is behind. And once you are started hovering and started interacting, you will see these different states. Okay. So now all our frames, all our uh, images ready. I hope you understood this bit. Now what we need to do next is a good old component creation. So I'll select all of these frames and I'll come here and I'll select create component set. And I'll create this nice component set with all the components labeled here and we have 10 variants and you can also call it zoom components so we have everything ready now and now the next thing that we need to do is basically wiring these prototypes up and that's the most crucial bit so let's see how can we do that so the first thing that we need to do is if you come to our first element and i'll just quickly select the selector thing which is not visible as, at the moment if you come here and you select or hover over it, I should be able to come to this zoomed state. So I'll select this zoom selector element and I'll drag an arrow to this next artboard. And the value should look like this. And instead of on click, you do while hovering, change to property one to zoom one. So zoom one is this first uh, component, this another component basically. And here you have to pick smart animate gentle and 600 milliseconds so that's the values that you have picked for the first element so once you are into this zoom mode you need to move around this image and should be able to basically see the other states so now what we need to do is i'll just come to the second state the first state is done okay, you don't have to do anything else this will become resting this will become our zoom state and when you're not hovering it'll all automatically go back to this 
uh, state. In the next state, what you need to do is you need to just move this circle around. And so what we need to do now here is again, click on this selector uh, image or this zoomed image that we have already created. And I link it to the next artboard. And instead of on click, you want on drag. So you want uh, users to drag this to see the other part of the image. And on drag, change to one to two, perfect. Smart animate, gentle and 600 milliseconds. So what will happen now is, when you move between, like when you move up, you will see a motion happening automatically, a smart animation happening automatically uh, from this state to this state. It will give this nice uh, zoom effect. So that's what Figma will do if you just have the same name. And that's why we have cropped the same image to different uh, locations. Similarly, when you are at second image, again, select the same selector component and connect it to the next element, which is just moving a little bit up. So again, you don't want it to be on click. You want on track, change to smart animate, gentle 600 milliseconds. Perfect. Now you have to do the same trick. So first link everything in the uh, linear order. So just move from here to here on the top, then come back below till here. So let's quickly add the first level and the forward flow. So let's quickly do that. Okay, so I've completed our forward flow where basically you are just moving around the circle, moving it up and then moving it down. Okay, and just to close the loop, I'll just select the last one and link it back to the first one. So similar interaction. Now you have completed the entire circle here. If you see, you're moving here and back to this. Now you also have to do backward flow, which basically means if you go back from here to here, you should be able to do it, right? Not just one linear flow. You should be able to do back flow as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go to my second component and there is no back from this first component. So that's perfectly fine. I'll just go into my second component and I'll link it back to the previous stage. And again, I have to do the same values on drag, smart animate, gentle 600 milliseconds. By the way, you can play with these, but I think gentle works the best. And you have to do it for all the different selector circles or the zoom circles that we have created. And you have to do it for everything. So let's just link this to previous one and let's just quickly do it for all the screens. Cool. So I've also created the backward flow. So the forward flow was done. Now I've also done the backward flow. So it's a cyclic circle. You can move around the shoe easily with this and you can also retrace it back, reverse it as well. So now both of our states are ready. And now one more thing that you have to do, if you see we have this blur, right? Now what happens is when you click outside of this image or when you click on this blur, it should go back to this original resting state. That's how all the sites work. When you move out or you click out of the image, you go back to your original image state. So that's what we have to do. Link all the blurs at any moment when a user click on this blurry part outside, except the circle, I should be able to go back to this original state. So what I have to do is I'll have to link all the blurs that you have in all the images back to your first resting state. So let's select the first blur and I'll just hit it here. Now for the blur, you need on click change to instant. So you can do instant or you can also do dissolve, so, but don't do smart animate because when you do smart animate, um, you will see things moving. For example, if the circle is here, uh, it will move here. So you'll see this artifact. So don't do uh, smart animate, do either instant or dissolve. So I'm doing instant as of now. And you have to do it for all the blur layers. Okay, now, so I've also connected all the blurs back to the first uh, image. If you see all the blurs are now connected back to the uh, resting state. So when you click outside, you should be able to go it. And now if I show you the entire thing, so we have created the forward flow, we have created the reverse flow, and we have also created this clicking on blur should take you to the first image. And now I know it looks a little messy, but this is also give us a really nice fruitful results. So the next thing that you need to do is uh, you need to go to their asset component. So you click here on the assets tab and I'll see my zoom component available here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this into my original artboard here. I'm just going to place it here. This looks nice. And what we need to do is we just have to hit prototyping play. Okay. So our prototype is loaded. Let's see how it looks like. So the first thing that you remember, if we hover here, it should switch to the zoom mode. And that's happening. Perfect. So when I drag this circle up to the next state, you see it's automatically tracing in between states as well because we have linked it through smart animate. And if I go to the next state, I'll be able to see this. 
I'll go to the next state. I'll be able to see this, and I can move between two states, forward and backward, because we have linked both of them uh, with drag. And I can go here. I can go down. Go next. I can go next. Next, in the center, and I can also start my journey reverse as well. Okay. Perfect. And if I click outside, I'm going back to the original resting state. Hover. I'll come back. Okay. If I just hover, I'm going again and going back to different state. If I drag this first element, then I'm switching into this uh, zoom mode and the magnifying mode. And this looks absolutely nice. So yeah, that's that's about it actually. And this is how you build this a uh, nice magnifying interaction. I hope you understood this bit. It's a little complicated, I would say, in terms of explaining. But trust me, when you start building it, it's really easy to build it. Now, uh, since you understood this entire interaction, I'll just quickly highlight the obvious cons of this entire prototype. So first of all, if you see, I've taken a big image and I've only selected parts of this image, which is on the periphery of this shoe. So that's why you were able to do this circular one. I've not selected central images, uh, but if you want, you can add central circles as well, where you have zoomed on the central area. And then you can also link it between different areas and create a, a drag animation from there as well. Second is, this is drag. So I've created this using drag. So when you are between one to second state, you're able to drag it, but once you leave it, it'll just move automatically to the next closer state. So if you see here, if I just don't do anything, it'll just move automatically up. So that's an obvious con that you don't see on um, the actual websites, actually e-commerce website. It doesn't automatically move to a state. It just stays there wherever the mouse is, okay? So that's an obvious con because we are using drag, but you also remember that this is just a prototype. Uh, the idea of a prototype is just to convey how an interaction will work it need not to be absolutely perfect. I do a lot of effort in creating these videos. So if you like it, do hit like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.